Hello, welcome. We're looking at Khan Academy, the trigonometry section. Specifically, let's go to equations and identities. We will look at the last practice set. And I scroll down, here it is. Finding, nope, that's not it. Yes, it is, okay. Finding trig values using angle addition identities. So what we're really doing here is trying to use um, angles that we know to solve for angles that are not known. What I mean by that, let me show you a different example. I've worked a couple out already. This one, um, we'll start here. The cosine of 17 pi over 12. What is that? Well, um, that might not be something we recognize, right? Uh, the cosine of 17 pi over 12, I'm not sure what that is, but I can use instead uh, friendlier angles that I know to figure this out. So let me just scroll down and start to show you what I would do. I would do a little sketch and I'm thinking, well, here's pi radians and we have 17 pi over 12. So that's 12, and we're thinking in terms of 12th. So here that's already 12 pi over 12. But, right, that, that's just the same thing as pi radians. 12 divided by 12 is 1. But we have 17, so we need 5 more twelfths. 5 more twelfths to finish our angle. So right here, this little additional bit right here is an additional 5 twelfths. And that brings us to 17 twelfths. All right, so I, I'm looking at this and it's a little hard to read. So let me just fix this. So what I'm saying is uh, this total angle is comprised of 12 pi over 12 and an additional 5 pi over 12 here. And that all, to all together, let me erase this pi radians right there, all together if we add these up that is the 17 twelfths. Why do I do that? Well, usually, I'm, I actually, it takes me forever sometimes to figure out how to break these angles down. And there's many ways to do it. I'm just showing you how I start the thinking process. Right, I break this down, I'm thinking, all right, all right, well, we're dealing with cosine. And um, here, whatever the cosine of this total angle is, it must be related to 5 pi over 12, okay. And there must be a second angle up here that has the same cosine. And that's where the 5 pi over 12 comes in handy. And that's not something I recognize right away. I just I draw it out to figure it out, right? So here I say, okay, this reference angle, theta hat, that's 5 pi over 12. So if I go up 5 pi over 12, Right? If I go up 5 pi over 12, I'm going to have an angle with the same cosine. How do I know that? Those two angles have the same, if I go down 5 pi over 12 or up 5 pi over 12 here, those are going to have the same x value. If you remember with cosine, it refers to the x value of the point that crosses the unit circle. So these two points, or these lines, intersect the unit circle, they have the same x values, so they have the same cosines, right? Um, so so what, how do I proceed from here? Well, what I would do is I'd say, okay, well, I know that this is 5 twelfths back, 5 twelfths back from pi radians, so you can do pi radians minus 5 pi over 12 to figure out that this angle that we're actually looking at is 7 pi over 12, right? Because 7 pi's plus 5 pi's, that makes a full 12 pi's of the 180. So we just did a lot of work. What do we figure out? We figured out that our first angle that we're dealing with, 17 pi over 12, looks like this. And the cosine of that angle, which could be thought of as this point here with some x value, has the same cosine of this angle with the same x value. And that angle is just 5 pi 12 up from pi radians, right? Instead of being five pi, five pi over 12 down or past pi radians. So the question was, well, that doesn't tell you the angle. The angle starts here, 
What is that angle? Well, it's pi radians, the full 180, minus this 5 pi over 12, and that's what we're dealing with is 7 pi over 12. Why did I do that? Why go through all this work? Because we started off with the cosine of 17 pi over 12. But I'm not sure how to rewrite that using reference angles. There might be a way. I just, it didn't occur to me. Uh, instead, I'm like, oh, well, this is the same thing as the cosine of 7 pi over 12. And then I started thinking, well, does that help me? Is there a way to write this angle, or break it into, excuse me, friendly reference angles? And the answer is yes. It's pi over 4 plus pi over 3. How did I know that? How did I know to look for 7 pi over 12? Well, part of it is experience, but I'm, I'm always looking for ways to rewrite an angle into some mixture of fourths, thirds, halves, and sixths, and thirds. Some, these are all the landmark angles, and I should have definitely, this, this bothers me the way I wrote it. The landmarks that I'm always looking for, let me scroll down and write that so that the denominator start with the highest denominator and work the way down. So that I'm looking for sixth, I'm looking for fourths, I'm looking for thirds, I'm looking for halves, and I'm just looking for pi over one as well. Right? Any combination of these right here, all of these problems usually, for me at least, involve some combination of these landmark angles. And sometimes the, the, it gets tricky, like um, you might have to deal with instead of one fourth, maybe three fourths, instead of one third, maybe two thirds, and so on and so forth. But these are all defined on the unit circle and can be used here. Now what do I do? All this talking, let's, let's solve this. So we're gonna use the cosine addition formula that says the cosine of A plus B equals cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. And in this case, a is our first angle, pi over 4, and b is our second angle, pi over 3. So it's the cosine of pi over 4. That's a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90. So the cosine is just square root of 2 over 2, times the cosine of b. So the 45, 45, 90, right? That was the first triangle we looked at. That's hypotenuse of one, the side lengths are radical two over two. So the cosine was the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's where the radical two over two comes from. And now we're dealing with a pi over three measurement and that's 60 degree angle. So here's 60, 30, 90. If the hypotenuse is one, uh, the side across from the smallest angle is a half and the side across from the 60 degree angle is radical three over two. So the cosine of this angle is one half over one, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, one half essentially, minus the sine of pi over four, which is the same as the cosine, times the sine of 60, opposite over hypotenuse, radical three over one. And this is our answer. We just want to simplify it a little bit. And believe it or not, this is extremely common, this type of answer. Uh, and by that I mean, you actually, I'm surprised at how much I see this variation. I get radical two minus radical six over, I made a mistake here, this should be a two, over four. You'll see lots of square roots of twos and square roots of sixes to solve these. So that's that one. Um, and just to, to kind of retract and go back, all we're doing is playing around until you can find some reference angles. There's nothing wrong with going the other way here and using that to your advantage. Maybe that would be easier, right? There's always a way to do it. Just keep going until you find something that works. And in this case, I believe the answer is choice A. It's missing the line though because of the, of the way I think I zoomed out. Um, all right, let's do one, maybe two more so you can see a variety of these problems. Uh, let's go to this one. If you see a tangent problem, let's just say that uh, there is a tangent formula for addition and subtraction of angles, but it is also true that the tangent of a plus b 
is equal to, well, tangent is sine over cosine, so the tangent of a over b, a plus b, is equal to the sine of a plus b over the cosine of a plus b. In other words, if you forget your tangent formula, you could use the sine and cosine addition formulas. However, we're not going to do the proof here, unfortunately we don't have time for that, but that simplifies to the tangent of a plus the tangent of b. That does not look very neat, let me fix that. Tangent of a plus the tangent of b over 1 minus the tan of a times the tan of b. And similar, similarly, if the, you look at the tangent of a minus b, that's equal to the sine of a minus b over the cosine of a minus b, but look how cool this is. It's the same formula, but the signs are flipped. So tangent of a minus tangent of b over 1 plus the tangent of a times the tangent of b. And we are going to end up using one of these formulas here. It'll just be quicker for us. So what are we looking at? Okay, we've got 17 pi over 12. And does that seem sound familiar to you? It's the same as the cosine of 17 pi over 12, right? So we're going to split this into pi over 4 and pi over 3. Okay. So then we could say that in this case, the tangent of 17 pi over 12 is the same as the tangent of um, pi over, well actually we should be careful now I'm thinking about this. Our work there was based on the rules of cosine. The angle is the same. I said pi over 4 and pi over 3. Sorry about that. Um, the angle is the same. However, so we can use some of the information from before. Um, our angle is going here. The reference angle is still 5 pi over 12, and that's just this angle right here. But the way tangent works, tangent is not just, the cosine is just the x value, sine is just the y value. So there's some point here, negative y and negative x. Um, the tangent is the ratio of those two. It's sine divided by cosine, it's negative y divided by negative x. So where is there another point that equals negative y over negative x? Right, negative y over negative x. Well, that's the same thing as y over x, right? two negatives divide the same as two positives. So if we just follow along the slope of this line, right? I say slope because you can divide the y and x points for the slope of a line that goes through the origin. There's a point over here, xy, that has the same tangent because these two points are on the same line. And that, that point is just gonna be up five pi over 12 from the x-axis, right? So now we just need to, to break up, we need to find the tangent of, well, we've established from this picture, let me just scroll down here, that the tangent of 17 pi over 12 is the same thing as the tangent of 5 pi over 12. And then there's usually some way to use this information, right? Think about your landmarks. You've got pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2 and pi, right? These, these landmarks can help us figure out some, some, in some way break down 5 pi over 12 into these things here, and then we can solve it. Now, um, I, I solved this problem already, so it's, I see it a little bit quicker, but maybe you should take a moment, pause the video and try to solve it. Okay, so pi over 6, that's 2 twelfths, right? This is 2 pi over 12 plus pi over four, that's three pi over 12, and put them together and that's five pi over 12, which is what we're looking for. And now we can solve this. The tangent of pi over six, that's referring to, pi over six is 30 degrees, right? So it's referring to this triangle right here. Let's say the hypotenuse is one, there's my right angle. This is my 30 degree angle. So that means this has to be my 60 degree angle. So this side is 1 half, and this side is radical 3 over 2. What do we know about the tangent? Well, the tangent of pi over 6 
is it's the opposite over the adjacent, right? It's sine over cosine. So, um, so sorry. So pi. So so that means the the tangent is one half. So write this down. The tangent of pi over six is equal to one half times two over radical three. I just keep change and flip, right? We're dividing by fractions here. Those twos cancel, and we have, I'm gonna rationalize it, but I'll write that step out so you can see it. That's gonna be one over radical three. Multiply the top and the bottom by radical three to rationalize our denominator, and we get radical three over three. So the tangent of pi over six is radical three over three. The tangent of pi over four is one, right? That's the opposite uh, over the adjacent. And in that triangle, both sine and cosine are the same value. So the tangent is one, right? That's referring to a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the angles are equal and uh, these two angles are equal. And the side lengths, if the hypotenuse is one, are radical two over two. So the sine and cosine are both equal in that one. Now this helps us, we can just plug it into our formula. We know now the tangent of pi over six is radical three over three, and the tangent of pi over four is one. So the tangent of pi over six, that's radical three over three, plus the tangent of b, one, over one minus the tangent of a, radical three over three, times the tangent of b, which is just one. All right, what do we have here? Um, I think I have room. Let me erase some of this stuff. Okay. So this, I'm going to erase this. All right. So we have radical 3 over 3 plus 1. So that's just plus 3 over 3. Plus 3 over 3. So I'm sorry, I'll simplify it this way. I'm not going to jump steps here. So it's radical 3 over three plus three over three. And then down here, radical three over three times one is just radical three over three. So it's one here is three over three minus radical three over three times one is just itself. Um, so I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by three to cancel all those threes out. And what I'm going to get is these, these are going to cancel out now with this 3 here as we distribute it. Radical 3 plus 3 over um, 3 minus radical 3. And I'm going to change the order of these two to 3 plus radical 3. And on the bottom, we have 3 minus radical 3. If you had to go further and rationalize your denominator, you don't have to because the answers they give us in this problem, you'd multiply by the conjugate. And what that will do, the conjugate here, instead of 3 minus radical 3 is 3 plus radical 3. Doing this, I encourage you to try it, it will cancel out your radical signs, right? It'll cancel it out. And ultimately, if you want to try and simplify this, you'll end up with radical 3 plus 2. However, in this problem, I believe the answer they present is right here. But now, the interesting thing is I... I know this is correct, and I expected to see this form of the answer, but I noticed that this choice right here is almost correct. They just have the backwards uh, denominator terms backwards, so I, I'm maybe I'm missing something here, but I don't believe any of these answers are correct. This one is the closest, but again, the bottom here, the denominator should be switched. All right, thank you.